baby, let's go! Make some noise! new generation of organizing. And that's what it's gonna take to get these companies to bend the knee and come to the table. The ties have changed. Starting with the Starbucks workers, Amazon workers. Shout out to the RWDSU that kicked it off. And we'll get to them next. We got another CEO to visit after that, but we'll talk about that later. But right now, Howard Schultz. I don't know the man, because I don't work for Starbucks, but I can tell you, I know the man. And the man doesn't give a damn about his workers. That's all I need to know. So for me, being a part of, of the labor movement, being a part of the ALU, it's only right that we stand and show support and stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters and comrades of Starbucks. As you see, Chris Smalls there, uh, one of the union leaders uh, from Amazon, their union push, they joined forces with many of the union leaders uh, and actual uh, folks from Starbucks that are looking to push uh, that CEO, Howard Schultz, into doing something better for their workers instead of exploiting them, firing them, uh, and using them for a more and more massive profit with absolutely no um, <laughs> recognition of their lives. Uh, anyways, so they organized together in Manhattan and they put this whole thing together. Um, let's watch one more section of these speeches that were happening uh, as they fought for Labor Day. Let's watch. I was talking about from Long Island. She just was terminated not too long ago after the union vote. Uh, after, like, after a couple months after the union vote. A couple months after the union vote. So give it up for her because she was nervous. She didn't want to talk at first. I, for those seven years, I had many complaints I wanted to address, any many issues I wanted to address, and every single time I had an issue that I wanted to address, I was ignored or vilified or just. Just complete, it was just like they would take everything I would say, twist the words, and nothing would get done. She had 100% of union votes, the union card signed before our vote. And due to extreme union busting in the great next door, we lost the vote five to six and immediately filed an objection. Months later, because I was still talking about the union, I was still wearing my union pins, um, I was fired. I was fired July 27th last month, or actually two months ago now. It was the uh, March for Recognition rally uh, that was going on in Manhattan. Jessica, you were there. Um, I think many people see a lot of union uh, 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 folks, folks talking about, you know, we're fighting for better wages, we're fighting for our health care, we're fighting for so many different things. And sometimes it goes in one ear, not the other for folks. What did you see, or maybe what did you experience that maybe gave, hopefully, some hope to folks? Yeah, just a lot of solidarity of workers from all different backgrounds. So mainly Starbucks and the Amazon labor union were there. Of course, it was centered around going and visiting Howard Schultz outside of his penthouse, then heading over to Jeff Bezos penthouse. Mm -hmm. And so it was centered around two of the biggest union busters in the country. It's called the March for Recognition because the workers are organized. They have a union, they voted and won. And Amazon is still fighting despite them being recognized by the regional office of the NLRB where they made a recommendation that their union win will be certified. And usually the National Labor Relations Board does what the regional office recommends. However, Amazon immediately after this sends an email to their employees saying that what they would like is a direct relationship with them and that is what is best for the workers. So they're still engaging in union busting despite the workers already having won. And so that's why you hear Chris all saying no contract, no peace, because really what's going to change the conditions in these warehouses and in the Starbucks stores, and even for teachers, there were a lot of teachers there, is having demands met and having a contract signed where they agree to higher wages and better working conditions. And until they get that, they're really not gonna stop. And that's what this was supposed to send a message to say. And I think it was done very effectively. There are about 400 to 500 people. The streets of New York were shut down. Folks were marching through traffic. It was really just an amazing event. And it's important to note that these unions are worker led. 
which is something we haven't seen before. There are a lot of unions where there's big internationals and big like union bosses and you're paying dues to people that come from outside of the workplace that you've never worked alongside before. But the teachers that were there were saying we want a more democratic union. Amazon is worker led and Starbucks in many ways is worker led and worker organized. And so that's what we're talking about with this new labor movement. And the energy in the streets is just indescribable. You can feel it from the videos, but it was really amazing. This is one of those things. and. I'm seeing people tweeting about it and also showing some of the experiences from that as well. And as a change, it has to be a shift in our change, a change in our, our, our thought process when it comes to work and workers' rights. Because it's not like it's new and people posting things about how the weekend, we think the weekend are Saturdays and Sundays, which again, I'm sure many people don't get up. We're talking about standard nine to five, Monday through Friday type of work. And then the weekend became a thing. That wasn't just because. Owners of companies were like, you know what, you guys, you know what, Jimmy, you're looking a little tired. How about you take the next two days off and then come back on a Monday and that'll be the beginning of your week. No, that doesn't come from the folks who are looking to exploit people's energies and their lives for more profit. That came from folks fighting back. And it, was, it wasn't overnight, it wasn't immediate, and it wasn't kind and nice and going pretty please. Hey, can you maybe, uh, do we have any lobbyists that can talk to uh, our, our elected leaders to maybe do something about this? No, the power is always landing with the folks who have all this money already that have generated it through workers. And then the workers have to find a way to then bust through that. And it's a very long, hard process. That's why more support is needed for that type of stuff. Again, I think people forget what it is and how it can be better, how your life has to be given to work. I feel like you were saying a lot of those types of things as well, Jessica. Yeah, it's so true, JR. I really like that you point out the the weekend. A lot of people don't know that most change that we've gotten that's positive in this country is stuff that we've organized for in labor, it's unions, but also it's it's people being in the streets like we were yesterday. It's really people standing up and demanding things. Power will concede nothing without a demand that couldn't be more true and history is often whitewashed and they forget to, to mention those efforts conveniently because it's inconvenient for them when workers demand what they're entitled to. And a lot of people interact with companies like Amazon as a consumer, but people in those houses know someone who does, but it can be easy to say, well, I like when my package comes in two days and it's not as expensive as other places, so I'm going to shop there. But it's really important to know what goes into that. How do workers uh, you know, work in those warehouses, warehouses? What are their working conditions? They're doing 12 to 14 hours of calisthenics. Workers are dying in those warehouses. So you might value the convenience of getting your package in a few days. But Pushon Brown at the beginning of the pandemic was a worker who was tasked with swabbing her co-workers noses to test them for COVID. She was a contracted employee, she was an associate, she was paid an hourly wage, no PPE, no medical training whatsoever, and she died. And Amazon gave her two months of severance pay to the family, two months of counseling to her sister and did nothing about it. There was no criminal investigation of Jeff Bezos or why this was happening. So it's really important to center the voices of the workers and that's what this march did to make more people aware of what goes into the convenience of getting your package in a couple of days. Those people are closer to your life and then you know. And we just have to realize that they're there. 